Thank you for that opening statement. Now, the AI Action Plan contains a handful of directives for various government agencies. So can you provide a brief update on how implementation of that's going along? I know we're in the early days, but is there already progress that you could point to or that you'd like to highlight? Yeah, there's been tr tremendous progress. Um, I think the, the day was particularly momentous when, uh, when the, the plan was released, because in addition to it, the president signed three executive orders and gave the longest speech by any president in the history of the United States on, on artificial intelligence. And there were a number of actions that were um, announced that day. Um, to kind of go through them, I think the, there's been a, a significant amount of progress at the Commerce Department on the I export package executive order. Um, they are on a 90-day shot clock to release a request uh, for proposals on the, on the export stack. Um, so you should be seeing that very shortly. Um, we had the, the second meeting of our AI Education Task Force that was chaired by the First Lady just last week. So a lot of the efforts around retraining, reskilling, and K-12 education that are, that are mentioned in the, um, in the action plan are, are very, much, very much in progress. Um, and I think from our office, uh, we're on the hook to, to do a, an RFI relating to um, identifying regulations that may be uh, uh, hindering the progress of AI, and that should be coming out very shortly. Thank you for that. Now, in your opening testimony, you mentioned the president's executive order on promoting the export of the American AI tech to, uh, technology stack. So unpack this uh, a bit for us, if you would. Uh, tell us what makes up that tech stack and how we can encourage other nations to adopt it. Yeah, so broadly, this tech stack, <clears throat> there's three main components of it. It's essentially the chips, the algorithms, uh, and then the applications themselves. That's probably the most simplified way to think about it. So to have a, a, a cohesive and successful sort of AI ecosystem, you have to have the physical compute to run the large language models themselves and then applications that are built on top of those. Um, those can serve a wide variety of purposes uh, for governments around the world. They can um, help governments with healthcare, they can help governments with tax processing, help governments with simple things like reserving space in a national park. But whatever those use cases may be, um, they need to be developed as part of a larger cohesive stack. So the hope is that we can flesh out, or the Commerce Department will be fleshing out in the RFP more details around what we're looking for, and we'll be able to bring together folks from the entire technology community to, to work on it. Um, to me, I think this is probably one of the most important actions of the, of the, of the action plan. Um, you know, I spent uh, much of my time in my, my first run in government as a US CTO um, going around the world talking to technology ministers about um, the, the challenges of Huawei and the ability and, and the challenges the US had in, in, in gaining the support of Western uh, telecom builds globally. Um, and we're in a moment now where um, unlike that time, we do actually have competitive technology. We have the best chips, we have the best models, we have the best applications, and it's incumbent on the US government to help promote these technologies broadly so that um, when the PRC has the capacity to, um, to actually export chips themselves, we are already there and already around the world. So what's the counter vision, if you will? Uh, we see the optimistic vision that in this uh, AI plan, but if we're not adopted as the U.S. tech stack, stack around the world, if we're not the standard, what's the downside to us and when will Americans know and regret that choice? Yeah, I, I think, again, although we're Right now, I think it's a, it's a special moment because there hasn't actually been a, a standard that has been set. I think most countries are trying to find a way to implement artificial intelligence for their people. So we're primed right now to be able to be the, the solution for so many of our partners and allies around the world. Um, what's so um, special about this particular technology, it is, a, it, is a, it is an ecosystem that evolves with the developer community. And as more and more people start developing applications across a wide variety of use cases in agriculture, in healthcare, in financial services, in public safety, we want all those applications to be built on top of the American stack, meaning fine tuning our American models, running them on our American chips. And the threat we face is that if we aren't the standard around the world, those those models and those, appli those applications will be fine tuned on adversary models, running on adversary chips, and that's not a long-term solution for the U.S. For this adoption, do you think it's it's private companies that are going to take a lead? I know there's there's a government role, and that's what we're talking a little bit about today. But are private companies going to take the lead in finding markets and customers, um, with government providing financing guarantees and expedited license approvals, or will the government proactively seek these deals with other nations? 
Um, we're actually going to be working hand in glove with our private sector to um, assist them in doing the, the business development and outreach around, around the world. There's a lot the private sector can do, and I think they're very excited to export their, their products. But there's a lot that the U.S. government do can, to, to help support the introductions um, and the meetings with so many countries that they don't necessarily have access to. Thank you. Senator Baldwin. 